One of the most important skill sets that you can learn in GIMP or any editing software for that matter is learning how to make selections to precisely control where you place your edits on your image. So in this tutorial, we're going to do a quick overview of the six most used selection tools that you're going to be using in GIMP. And then later in the class, we'll go into these tools in a little bit more detail so you can get the most out of them. So we're going to jump back into GIMP here and we're going to select our section one folder again. And this time we have five images for this tutorial. And just like before, we're going to click and drag over the interface and then they will open up one at a time into new individual documents. And you can navigate to each image by clicking on the tabs. Again, if this isn't working for you, go to file, open and open the images one at a time and it will open up in new tabs right here. So the first selection tool we're going to use is the fuzzy select tool, which can be found on your toolbar right here. And you can also select it with the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter U. Now this selection tool is very similar to the magic wand tool in Photoshop. And the key to using this particular selection tool is adjusting the threshold. So here's how it works. So when you click on your canvas, it's going to give GIMP a reference color based on the color of the pixel you clicked on. Then GIMP will use that reference color to find similar colors next to it. Once it reaches the maximum threshold that you set in the tool options, GIMP will no longer select any more colors once it's reached that threshold. So in essence, the higher the threshold, the more of your image that will be selected. So let's see this in action. So right now I'm going to set my threshold here to 39.2. Once I click on it, that's going to be the reference point. And then it's going to make a selection based on that threshold or that range of colors. Now we didn't select the entire sky, so I need to click again. But before I do that, I'm going to hold down my shift key because the shift key is going to allow you to add to the selection. And once I click down here, it's going to, well, add to the selection and I need to continue doing this until I get the entire sky selected and it's going to take several clicks at this threshold in order to select the sky. Now if you're in a rush and you set the threshold higher and you click on your sky well it's going to select not just the sky but parts of the foreground as well because you've clicked a higher threshold or a larger range of colors. Now another quick tip that I like to use is using the draw mask option. So if you turn this on, you can then click and drag down and you'll see this pink overlay that will show you the part of the image that is going to be selected. Now, if you go too far, it will start selecting the foreground as well. So I need to back away until that disappears and then shift, click and drag down to continue selecting the sky. And this time in two clicks, I was able to select the sky. How cool was that? I love it. All right, let's go ahead and deselect with command or control shift plus A. All right, let's go to our next image, which is this one right here. And what we want to select this time is all the red petals. And this time we are going to use the select by color tool, which is grouped together with fuzzy select and it's right here. So shift plus O will activate this tool. Now it works very similar to the fuzzy select tool in that you need to set the threshold to increase or decrease your selection, but it works very differently when it comes to targeting your colors. So this time, instead of picking colors in a range next to the target area, it's going to select colors throughout the image. So let me show you what this is going to look like with the fuzzy select tool first. So I'm going to click and drag down and it's picking only the colors from these two petals because these colors are next to each other. I'm going to deselect and I'm going to select my select by color. And this time I'm going to click and drag down and it's going to begin selecting all the petals this time. How cool is that. So which tool you use is dependent on what it is you need to select. Again, it's not perfect. I need to make some adjustments, but it's much faster than the fuzzy select tool, at least for this particular image. I'm going to go ahead and deselect and we're going to go to the next image. For this image, we're going to make a selection of the turtle and I'm going to show you two different tools to do this. And then you can decide which one you like better. The first one I'm going to show you 
is called the Path Tool, which is similar to the Pen Tool in Photoshop, and it's not my favorite selection tool, but I wanna go ahead and show it to you in case you've already used the Pen Tool in Photoshop and you like it. Let me show you how to use it in GIMP. So you're gonna grab the Path Tool by clicking the letter B, which is the keyboard shortcut, and then you can also grab it from the toolbar right here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more so I can see the edge a little bit better. And then to use it, you're going to click to add an anchor point and then click and drag out the path. And then when you pull away from that anchor point, you're gonna get these little handles and then you can adjust where that path is being applied. The only problem is when you have the handles like this and you come over here and click, it's not always going to give you a straight line. It looks like it did a pretty good job that time. So let me see what happens when I pull it out a lot more this time, just to show you what's gonna happen. If we want a straight line, let's say from here to here, and I click here, I get a curve instead. So I'm going to undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z. Now to fix that, we need to take this handle and bring it back inside to get rid of it. Now, when I click here, I'll get a straight line. So basically you're going to click and drag out a path as you go around the turtle's edge and bring the handle in as needed to make sure that you're getting that straight line when you continue going around. Now this could take forever. I'm not gonna sit here and select this entire turtle. That's pretty much how you use it. What you have to do though, is you have to go back to the original anchor point here, hold down your command or control key and then click on that anchor point to close out that path so you can then fill it in or add a stroke or if you hit your enter or return key, it will then add that selection for you around that path. All right, let's go ahead and deselect with command or control, shift plus A, and then we're gonna get rid of the pass tool by selecting our next tool, which I believe is 10 times easier than the pass tool, and that is the scissors select tool, which is similar to the magnetic lasso tool in Photoshop. So we can grab that, via this grouping right here. If we right click, we'll find the scissors select and the keyboard shortcut is the letter I. Now, instead of clicking and creating the path by pulling out handles, GIMP is going to do this for us automatically by automatically applying the path between the two points. So I'm gonna click here to start with our first anchor point. I'm gonna come down here and click and boom. GIMP has automatically applied a path for us and we can just go along without worrying about pulling out those handles to adjust the angle of the curve or the path to get the selection that we need. Now it's not perfect right now, so I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna go around this corner here and show you what happens when it goes outside of the line like it did there at the bottom and how to fix it. But again, this is, I believe, much faster than the pass tool. So right here, it is outside of that edge right there. So I'm going to click on this line and move it into position and it's going to add another anchor point and it's going to affix that path exactly where I want it. Now just like before, we need to come up here and close out the path. This time we don't need to hold down our command or control key. We just click on the first anchor point and it automatically creates that path or I should say closes it and then with enter or return you can apply your selections. Let's go ahead and deselect with command or control. Shift plus A. All right, this is our next image and the tool that we're going to use now is known as the quick mask mode, which again is available in Photoshop. Now it's not available through the toolbar here, so you need to either use the keyboard shortcut, which is Shift plus Q, or come down here to the bottom left of the interface here and click on this icon to turn it on. Now that it's on, we have a red overlay and this represents what is selected. In this case, nothing is selected. So anything in red is not selected. Now to add to our selection, we're gonna grab our paintbrush tool with the letter P, or you can grab it from the toolbar right here. Now I'm gonna increase the brush size here a little bit larger, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm gonna paint over, actually I need to switch to white to the foreground here. And then when I paint over the horse here, it will remove that overlay and that lets you know that part of the image is being selected or is part of the selection. So once you go through and you adjust your selection this way, you can turn off the quick mask mode by using the keyboard shortcut again or clicking on this icon. And then it shows you the selection that was created with 
that selection tool. Now, I like to use this particular selection tool in conjunction with the first two, fuzzy select and the select by color, even some of the other selection tools that you're going to learn about as well. And that way I can quickly narrow down my selection to exactly where it was, because you may remember in this image here, it was selecting parts of the image outside of those petals. And you can use the quick mask mode to quickly remove it from the selection. All right, we're going to deselect again. And I have one more selection tool that I want to share with you. And this one is called the foreground selection tool which is in the same group as before, which is right here, foreground select. We don't have a keyboard shortcut for that, so you have to grab it from the toolbar. Now, the way this works is you're going to make an initial outline of the area of where the subject is or the foreground is, and then you're going to get an overlay like we did previously with quick mask mode, and then you're going to fine tune your selection that way. So I'm just gonna make a quick outline around our cardinal here. It doesn't have to be perfect because again, we're going to narrow down that selection process by helping GIMP figure out where the foreground or where the subject is in this case. Okay, so once you go back to the beginning, you're going to notice this little yellow circle. Once you see that, release your mouse button and then hit your enter or return key to get your blue overlay. So we have a lighter blue and a darker blue. So the lighter blue is the foreground and the darker blue is the background. Now in the tool options, you wanna make sure you have draw foreground selected. If not, it's going to do the opposite of what you want. So to fix or to refine our selection, you're going to use a brush tool which is automatically activated for you. You're just going to need to go in and adjust the stroke width to increase the brush size. So I'm going to go maybe a little bit lower here. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint on the subject to tell GIMP, okay, these are the colors, the textures, the brightness levels that we want to target because this is the subject. This is the foreground. So we're going to go ahead and paint around the inside this time. And I'm not going to select that branch because I don't want that as part of the background, or I should say the foreground. And we're going to see if GIMP selects that or not. If it does, we can then use our quick mask mode to remove it from the selection. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. I want to make sure that this part down here is selected as well, the tail of the cardinal. I'm going to go with the lower brush and then I'm going to make a selection here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get enough of those colors and that texture to reference or give GIMP a reference point for selecting the foreground. All right, so once you paint on there, you'll notice that that light blue overlay has disappeared. So this is the foreground, or we're telling GIMP this is the foreground, and it's going to refine that even further. Once we click on select, it's going to do its magic. It's gonna take a minute, depending on the size of the file and the speed of your computer. And then it's going to finally, hopefully, sooner rather than later, make a selection. And you can see it didn't make a selection of the tree branch here, and it, kind of missed these colors or this part of the bird as well. So we can go in with our quick mask mode now. And this time with our paintbrush tool, we are going to paint with white again to add that to the selection. Now, if we go too far and let's say we add in the branch, if you paint with black, that will remove that part from the selection. So we can go ahead and deactivate and then our selection process is updated. All right, so that was a quick overview of the selection tools in GIMP. There's still a lot more to learn and we're gonna cover more in upcoming tutorials. Once we get into the projects, you're gonna learn more about these tools to get the most out of them. But before we go on to the next section, there's another set of tools that you need to know about for editing your images in GIMP and that is tonal adjustments and color adjustments. So we're gonna cover those tools in the next tutorial. So if you're ready for that, let's do it.